Here we are on the first day of our mold making workshop leading up to fall Halloween iron pour. We're getting their patterns ready and we're about to run sand soon to do the first sides of their molds. The first thing we did when we got here is we took a look at what everybody brought. Once we had determined that they were possible, we made flasks that are big enough to accommodate the object and the gating system, which is the system through which the metal flows into the cavity of the mold. We have some wax patterns, we have some hard patterns. The hard ones we have fixtured in sand at the moment so we can make one part of the mold. The wax patterns we have designed mold and gating systems for the different parts. Well, hard objects, especially ones that are convoluted in shape, are more difficult to make a mold from. The wax, you can soften with heat or melt out with heat, so they tolerate undercuts and more convoluted shapes. Uh, hard patterns, you have to make a parted mold, many parts, if it's complicated. And that type of mold can be any number of separate parts that have to fit together like a jigsaw puzzle. Once the flasks were put together, some of them had to be fixtured in uh, reusable fixturing sand, others just lay flat on a table. Each piece is different. So the reason that we put plastiline on parts of the conch shell is because it is a very convoluted shape. It's quite difficult to make a mold out of sand from that shape. We take a look at it and we look for areas that are problematic and if it isn't going to interfere with the final product or if the artist is okay with it, we'll fill in areas that are very difficult to mold to make it easier. So with Bonnie's conch shells, we relieved some of the uh, difficult areas with plastiline and then because those molds are going to be several separate parts, I have them flipped sort of upside down so I can make a base for them first. They are embedded in fixturing sand, which is the same sand that we use to make the molds for casting, but with a clay and oil as a binder, so it doesn't harden in the way that the resin bonded sand hardens. That allows us to embed a piece in the fixturing sand, make a part of the mold in resin bonded sand, and then dig away and brush away the fixturing sand to make the next part of the mold. Once a pattern is set in its flask, ready for sand, the last step is to dust it with parting dust, which is the release agent. Uh, it keeps the resin bonded sand from sticking to the pattern and allows us to remove the pattern from the 